Inside of us, we both know you belong with Victor. You're part of his work, the thing that keeps him going. If that plane leaves the ground and you're not with him, you'll regret it. Maybe not today, maybe not tomorrow, but soon and for the rest of your life. But what about us? We'll always have Paris. We didn't have, we, we lost it until you came to Casablanca. We got it back last night. And I said I would never leave you. And you never will. Film, if you don't know what film is, it's like how they shot pictures and video before digital. So it's actually like a little strip of paper or just a piece of paper goes into the camera and it's light sensitive so it'll capture the light and make an imprint on the paper. And that's how you get a photo. That's how they did it when they first started making photos. My process. Um, so obviously you gotta load the film in, but I mean, it's basically, it, you have to slow down a lot because you have a limited amount of shots. It's not like digital where you can just rattle off a thousand shots in a shoot. Uh, with my cameras, I usually get 10 or 12 per roll. So, um, it gets expensive after a while. So you're a lot more careful about what you shoot and how you shoot things, so. So um, I was just getting kind of bored of digital. I've been, sh I've been shooting digital since I was like probably 14, 15. So I started film in June of 2019. And that was kind of what promoted me to switch. I was just getting bored of digital. I wanted to try something new. And film was, was kind of making, is kind of making like a comeback. So I heard about it and I was like, that's something I'd be willing to try. So yeah, that's kind of what inspired me to start shooting film. Um, film also has a look to it, obviously, that you just can't replicate on digital. So yeah. After you rinse it out, make sure your water's clear. Um, take it back out here. The film would be being in here. Just take it out here. And then, normally I would hang it up here. With, uh, some tape here. film would be, oh, there's a reel in here too. That's actually nice. So the film would be on this thing. It would be wrapped around the spool, but you would put that in the dark, like in complete darkness. You would put the film on there. So after you take the film out, I just hang it up here, let it dry for about a couple hours or so. And then we scan. So, yeah, it's the developing process. So my first film camera I got was a Yashica Mat 124G. And I mostly chose it because it looks cool. <laughs> um, I didn't know really how to shoot it, but obviously did you, any, you can learn anything on YouTube. So I just looked it up and it turns out it was pretty easy to shoot with, so. That was my first camera that I got. Um, my most recent camera that I use, that's like my mostly my go-to now, is my Mamiya RB67. It's a big, heavy camera, but it 
produces some fantastic images that I'm in love with, so. Next shot. You're supposed to advance it? Yeah. I just don't advance it, and okay. I just do that again. It's actually like super easy. That's <laughs> on, sick though. On these, yeah. It was kind of an accident how I learned how to do it on the uh, Mami over there because I just forgot to advance the frame and I was like, oh, this looks sick. And I'm like, yeah. and I realized I was like, oh, that's why it looks like that because yeah, those, I didn't advance it. Those prints turned out really, really cool. Yeah, no, I really like them. I want to get them framed, but I just don't. Have I think, frame. like I said earlier, that you can't replicate the film look. So people are still wanting to get that look because it looks so good and so unique. Um, and I think it's just like, you know, how vintage, vintage things are coming back. Like, you know, record players and people are trying to bring back like 80s, 90s styles and stuff. So I think it's part of that where it's like more vintage and cool now. So that's part, I think that's part of the art of it, using cameras that were made 30, 40, 50 years ago even, to still capture incredible looking images. Uh, even today in the age of digital and mirrorless cameras. Oh, I'm an idiot. I forgot. There we go. Maybe? Yes, there we go. All right, we're good. There we go. Now I'm ready to shoot. Okay, so I'm focusing on the little thing right here from like this close. Film Life Magazine is an Instagram page that I help run. We basically just feature photos from the film community on Instagram. The founder of the page, Mark, Mark Miller, um, posted something on on the Film Life page asking for curators, and I have no idea how many people responded to him or not, but uh, I responded and we talked a little bit. He asked me a few questions about like how I got started in film and what I specialized in and all that. And he took me on and now I'm part of the team. Um, when I joined the team, the Film Life team, we had about 30,000 followers probably. Now we're approaching 16 thousand so we've grown quite a lot in the time that i've been a part of it but it's super cool to see and it's super inspiring seeing all the work of the film community and it just pushes me to go further and work my craft even harder we're gonna scan these negatives here if you uh come up to the light there See what they look like. Some pictures I took at the parkway last weekend. I had to move it up a little too because the image there wasn't all the way in at the bottom. So we're gonna try this again. Hopefully it works. There we go, much better. All right, so you gotta scan each of these one at a time. In there, so now it's imported. So now we just need to move it, make sure it's at the right thing, yeah. So what I'll do next is I'll white balance the photo out. So I'll do it on an area, or black balance it rather. Do it on an area that's supposed to be black which is the border because the border doesn't really doesn't see light and then i'll use an app called negative lab pro to convert the image from the negative to a positive so we we'll use this app we just hit control n here and there's my settings for it basically just brings the colors back so once i hit that and once it finishes loading the colors will be back Oh my. There you go. So basically what I'll do is I'll just mess around with these a little bit. Uh, I'll change some colors around, like 
feel like the highlights are too too blue so we'll make them red yellow try and bring out the fall the fall vibe here yeah in the future it could be something profitable uh right now especially especially for the film life page it could be profitable in a way um but for like me personally film photography i think it's more just like a hobby like don't get me wrong i'm super passionate about it but um i don't i wouldn't want to do it as like a job <laughs> it's super stressful and well it's not stressful it's relaxing but you know there's always a certain uncertainty i guess when uh capturing film photos so yeah i wouldn't want that to be a job for sure but yeah, I definitely love it, and I'm definitely going to be doing it for a long time. Can I stay a bit longer? Stay forever. really cool process though. I've never known how to develop film and didn't know it was that much effort to get those pictures. But honestly, you've seen his work well worth the process. Word. I think the process, um, I do everything myself. So obviously shooting the, the photos, um, I develop, uh, develop the photos myself scan them myself and obviously export them to social media or whatever um so yeah i think the process is just something that can really like get you to forget about everything that's like going on in the world and you kind of are just focused on that one thing